Hello everybody, my name is Nada Serafimovic. I'm a children's book illustrator from Belgrade, Serbia. If you're new, welcome to my channel. And this video is um, wrapping up and talking about what <laughs> I did last year in 2020 and like my first attempts of being an author but really really in short like framed uh, parts of this video will be probably uh, split by minutage here down below and you can check all the parts if you're interested in a particular one and why being a book author full book author writing and illustrating a book is so different than just illustrating it <laughs> which is what I learned so far is kind of an amazing difference. <laughs> Stay tuned. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who purchased the any any book online, offline. To thank all of the support I got from my colleagues, from friends abroad, and in both uh, abroad and in Serbia. And <laughs> you can't believe my luck. I'm really really blessed it's such a small step but i got pretty big support for it and mm, i can imagine nobody takes anything for granted that shouldn't take and like say yeah my colleagues and friends should buy the book to support no i'm not personally that i would rather give something as a gift than think yeah they should buy it but they definitely proved me wrong and uh, some even childhood friends told me yeah I, I always admired you and I thought that you would be on this path I still think this is a super small step into publishing and I, that, that I can do uh, always better with each next uh, with every story that I come up with in the future, in the near future, hopefully in this year uh, yeah, and let's, um, after all the gratitude, as you can see, I'm shy. I'm really shy. I love thanking everyone, but I'm shy because I have to talk about myself. <laughs> and this video has to be useful for you. You, people on YouTube, my colleagues, people who are aspiring to be illustrators, to find the difference between doing all the things <laughs> and then uh, working with a the publisher, then self-publishing in, in, in both cases and then um, reflecting on all that after everything is done. <laughs> so, and when before, uh, right before, I have to start uh, illustrating new stories, hopefully uh, in March this year. So I'm, I'm um, yeah, let's, let's start tackling. I'm very excited to share the experience with you in much shorter terms than like studio vlogs <laughs> that's for very patient people who like a background noise for their work but this is so sweet and shorter let's say okay so the first let's say section or thing i want to talk about is writing uh there if you're a creative person there must be something that's going up and <laughs> going on in your head um all the time right but when you put it on paper, it's different. Uh, for me, there there was always a huge uh, uh, gap because of the anxiety of if the, is is it good enough? Isn't it good enough? <laughs> of course, it's not good enough. But when you put it on paper, there is a little bit of spark and encouragement made by yourself, like literally, you're encouraging yourself by putting this on paper. Everything you want to write, like. I wrote for this uh, today's video now and that can be a huge and long like a long bridge for anyone to pass but I suggest writing your coolest ideas on paper and the writing just really basically starts like that somebody just puts it on a paper just the way they want over the night and also about writing please read books read any books that are um, let's say it can be framed in your target group like age group if you're writing stories for kids uh, you don't have to you don't want to copy anyone but you you want to stay educated and you want to stay as literal as possible uh, i don't know how to say uh, in serbian we say biti pismen što pismeni što načitani but uh, as for english i would say read books <laughs> it's it's so essential and important 
And uh, over the years I read, you can imagine if somebody works on Fiverr like me, so many good and no good, average and bad manuscripts. I think it's intoxicating. I think it's really like intoxicating. It's toxic. It's bad for you to read bad literature. And if anyone has to do it, that's me because um, that's how I survived over the last 10 years. Uh, not only on Fiverr, but anywhere. Basically, you have to go through the manuscript or something that somebody thought about and he didn't read a book in his life. And then he suddenly wakes up and writes a book and he has some pocket money to spend. So that is a survival for someone like me when I was starting and even after. I can put put five people on, like, on the fingers of one hand, people who were rocking like rocking, like extremely good writers for kids and they came to me for, with, with their stories. And I will never forget those stories. So that's kind of story that you want to aim, but those were extremely educated people and people who were engineering every sentence with every word. Not to put too much pressure on the writing, you have to put it all first on a paper and then please do the rewriting if you can um, for me it's a problem to write in english but i still did it <laughs> and then i have really had some huge uh, some per pretty cool grammar checking <laughs> to that and if i put the sentence in the right way because you can think like serbian person and write in english which is of course not good um, I think there were like one or two sentences that were mm, maybe more English is like this, but it wasn't a mistake. And the grammar, who knows? Who knows? I lost track of it because uh and the. Uh. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think it's hard to write in a foreign language, but right now I'm just talking about writing. <laughs> and my example, um, as, as for that matter. And uh, as for rewriting, I think. Um, about thinking about structure of the story like beginning middle and the end that is especially for kids that's pretty pretty important because if nothing else they're used to the structure in like a western civilization has a structure for stories that is literally three parts in uh, literature when i was uh, studying in serbia like going to school there were so many more elements, like more like Shakespeare school, where you have five to nine parts where you either stumble, character stumbles upon something before the end of the story. There, there, there's just so many elements that you could use to make the story interesting, but keep the three parts clear for yourself so you know how to manipulate in between. Uh, as for artwork, I would suggest having thumbnails with uh, 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 even after just writing the story, right after, or if you're inspired while you're writing, make some thumbnail. Or if you're an illustrator, just do some thumbnails that will inspire a story. You can go any from any, um, let's say, section where you're from or where is your strongest point, uh, spot to your weakest spots. <laughs> like for me, it's definitely writing, but. Um, uh, there are certain um, types of books where you really need thumbnails up front, where you need to imagine the book while you're writing or right after or even before. For illustrators, it's often just starting with a single frame that they illustrate and then they wrap, they, they, they just make an entire story around that which they illustrated freely, they didn't know what they were doing, but it can be super inspiring to get an entire story around one or two fr frames or even just the character sketch. I think that's very exciting when you know how to draw uh, or learning how to draw and you love storytelling. I think that's a perfect marriage. <laughs> it really goes together, really, but like visual storytelling and writing is just an um, entire book and it's wonderful. Big, huge thing, huge thing, okay. Think, it, it says here, think in advance about translations and cover adaptations. For me, there was absolutely no way that I could get a publisher and it happened. That's why I didn't. But it, the thing I went through 
to make the, the, the covers kind of cohesive, which I wanted, not everybody wants, but I really wanted to do that, uh, really caused me trouble. And I will demonstrate why. Because my mom is exp expert in French, French literature, and she translated this uh, to French. And it was all spontaneous. Like my publisher said, "Yeah, uh, maybe we could do. Maybe we could translate it to French." And I said, "My mom is uh, actually expert in French." And uh, then she, even though she didn't really have, let's say, a uh, huge interest, she said, "Yeah, let's do the survey if you have time." I was super happy because I wanted my children from my country to have opportunity to read that book, and it's for young, super young age. It's from four-year-olds like up to nine-year-olds eventually ten but it depends really on what kind of child is holding the book you know and uh, because it's about creative process and about humility and all that so let me let, let's go through this together this is the original it's sleepy before New Year's Eve okay <laughs> and this was eventually um, this is by, but I didn't do, we added by, uh, and uh, this is like you can see all hand drawn, like digitally drawn, hand written. It's a hand lettering and it's uh, unique. And I, did, I wanted a super simple cover, like super, super simple. Um, and uh, then you, uh, I translated it with my mother to French, and then. I had, we can see it in the studio vlog, I think it's number three. I had a huge, huge challenge to, because the, the deadline was also tight, you, can, you could not enjoy and do that, <laughs> uh, really. It's Somnole Avant Le Réveillon de Nouvel An, and uh, you can see that I used the bird, that I used the S, I found the letters that were like similar to find different rhythm, uh, the, like similar rhythms in the design and there was actually none and there were <laughs> three words more <laughs> and it was really hard, uh, I can tell you that. Um, so uh, it was um, like I wanted to keep the style but you can see there are three lines here and two lines here and that, that now this is just one book. <laughs> I will show you the Serbian version you can see it's absolutely and totally different like there is <laughs> there is no similarity uh, and I can tell you this is the easy, easier cover to uh, make in, in different languages um, so there were, there were lots of lots of letters in here and God knows uh, how I did it but I still tried to make some sort of a balance between uh, these rhythms over here uh, and I think I think I did it so yeah really I think you will use font probably not like me if you do this please take care of and if you can plan uh, with your publisher or with yourself like self publishing what are your possibilities and what languages you want to include so you could really, really make one solution that will really, let's say, we say in Serbia, drink water for all of the languages, if possible. That would be ideal design solution for the cover because cover is so important and so iconic. And I don't know if I did this here. It's super simple. I love simplicity, but it was hard to keep the the the, the to maintain the same look. And most of the publishers are, for example you do originally English edition, okay? And then you just do French, they make totally another cover. It's it's so often because it's so hard to do that upfront. Uh, possibly because you don't know if your market is gonna like to have also that in French, if French, uh, French people are interested. And that's logical, but please, if you want to plan and you want to stay super um, as professional as you can, um, plan ahead, plan ahead, see what your possibilities are. As for Christmas costumes, I want to show you um, the original one. I did this by myself before I knew it would be published, so you, you, if you see these two, these were already like prepared for, um, for that. Uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah, so this is, it was also be, without yellow, but we I added it after that because the inner pages definitely evolved into, um, let's see the light, into this uh, full color book. And um, yeah, so this was the first one where I included, so this was a trick, I included a logo here to, with with the sexual genitive to look really cool to me, at least. And uh, then um, there was absolutely no way that I could think that it would be published by publisher, then I would have French, uh, especially French. So um, you can see the, where the, the what I'm t talking about right after this. So you see this one, look at this one. This is Lego Le Costumes de Noël de Begueloso, which is, I don't know, I'm, I'm butchering the French, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to learn French, but uh, yeah, I forced my mother to teach me finally um, the French, uh, French language, but yeah. Uh, so you can see it was, this was just like crazy um, brainstorming. Uh, and I didn't have much time. We needed to cover files for the catalog for, um, let's say, announcement of new books and for approval for the publishers. So we, you know, you, you will not go from the last page of the book, you will go from the cover for the catalog. So you can see I put, I, I, ha, I had to use the layout, but there was no way I could keep this logo over here. There was absolutely no way. So I completely ignored the logo because it would be super ugly to put it down here. Um, I left the domain here because my publisher didn't mind. Uh, she said, oh, it's okay to be, um, to have your website, uh, um, your domain on, on the cover. Cool, fine. So I kept something, but the logo is out. And I put three words into this logo so I could use some similar feeling for Noel is Christmas. So I put on the same position and then, you know, the rest is history. Let's see the Serbian version. La -la. I know this sounds rumbly, but this was really an issue for me uh, and I didn't hope it was coming so I want to if you're watching this video and you want to do something like this, please prepare. Um, and then finally, the creepiest, uh, honestly I say creepiest, maybe it's not a good word, but the creepiest moment where I, I'm doing the Chirilix and I'm doing Božićni Kostimi, which is super simple. And I made a, practically, I changed the title here because I didn't want this to be Bege Birdini. The bird is like, the, the brand I, I um, came up with is basically in English. So I wanted to translate this to Chirilix to, you know, cover my eyes and don't look at it, but still to have a nice, um, nice title for the book and just ignores the sex alternative that it was originally way cooler in English <laughs> and God knows, God knows, this is just a joke, this is not a real logo because it's beard, it's, it sounds like beard, you know, it, it's, um, yeah, it should be Bege Ptica, Ptica is a bird, but it's changing of a brand if I do that, so I was, oh man, I was struggling with this one. But I, I, I think I managed it just for the sake of running through deadlines. This was solved in a, let's say, in, in a solid way. But I'm not sure if I should be ashamed of this. <laughs> because I had no solution. You cannot sound good in Serbian if you have something that is English word brand. Like in, in its essence, it's, it's crazy. So, yeah. That's about cover adaptations. I hope that this was useful. Let's go to the next. Yeah, before I uh, before I continue with some sort of thoughts and advices, tips for it, I wanted to go through the book and say 
This is the premium quality from Amazon. So yeah, I want to talk about printing in a way. So as thrown in the water the way I was and the way it all went, which is great, uh, my publisher set up a premium printing option. Probably because she thought, yeah, it's a holiday, those are like going to be gifts under a Christmas tree or whatever. It should be premium quality. I can say cover is honestly for print on demand for Ingram is pretty impressive. Um, but inside I'm not impressed at all. Um, these, the colors are accurate, if I can uh, say that. Uh, still a little bit paler, which is normal for made paper. Uh, paler than I definitely would want. Um, and you can see here, it's just a vibrant enough, I guess. And um, I, for premium quality, which is super expensive, piece by piece, copy by copy already, this was is insanely expensive. And I do not recommend premium for people who are publishing for the first time with anyone like me. Uh, I don't recommend it because I was sweating like ugh, just with a thought that someone would want to buy and then see that their wallet has to be empty after this. Maybe this is normal in US, but I saw many nice books for five, six bucks, complete price, and I will never um, say anything against it, you know. So the, the, the price, I think overwhelm me in a way that oh my god I have no experience I, I never did this uh, I want to be loyal and and believe everything my publisher says and I want to listen but there was still uh, a lot of chills and a lot of bad bad feeling about me wanting to rob somebody and people definitely don't know anything behind the price, so I always had to explain this is just a da 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 and this is just a da. So many people don't, don't know about print on demand. I knew about print on demand. People don't know about it even though they are like illustrators. They, they don't know. Unless you use something, you don't know anything about it, I guess. So as for printing, I think my publisher will switch for next books and next uh, season to standard printing. And I hope it will be um, like half of the price now, which is crazy. And um, it will be more decent even for author pieces. It will not be a value because I have, I need my physical portfolio, which you can see here. It's two, minimum of two books from every story and of every language. And this already, when you see it as, as $13 print on the map per copy, this is already a bulk that somebody would think oh you're selling like you're you're a criminal or <laughs> you're a criminal with books so uh, it's i can tell you it's not easy especially when you live in serbia not going to comment more on that <laughs> um, next phase after writing thumbnail and sketching i would say check um check your manuscript and illustrations and try to think what would your ideal reader and the worst reader think about it. Just be super critical and super flattering at the same time or separately in two phases when you think about it. It's a mental process that will help you not brag or, or um, not brag about anything or be feel like you're extremely criticized by a publisher who sees something that is ex like Wow, it's visible. This has to be changed. So uh, if you can think as a reader and put yourself, in my case, into a four, five, six-year-old girl or a boy that is looking at these illustrations and text and if it's... Uh, you can go page by page if it's understandable enough, if it's uh, um, good enough for them to read, if it's useful, uh, if uh, maybe there's too much text or uh, you need few more words on some other pages to be super clear what you want to say because some um, simple sentences are I would say easiest to put many interpretations on and for kids I don't think that's good because they're not still able to they they're starting to learn that and then until the end of 
their lives to until they're old to in, be interested in interpretation of the same thing by many other by many 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 people that will meet in their life and even through books uh, if you write uh, if you read uh, Nietzsche and if you read after that Schopenhauer and then after that you read Hegel you'll see that they're talking about life but in totally different ways so simple sentences have to be double checked I guess because you don't think about it you just think oh yeah yeah that's it because you think that way but in a literal sense I think double checking is really welcome then after that Face, even give to someone who is that age, that ideal reader of yours, or try to put yourself in a shell and go back in time and say, okay, I'm a four or five year old and I'm looking at this and I'm reading this. After that, I would start probably coloring, looking for a publisher, doing something to probably pre do the, I don't know, pre-marketing the, the book if you're really sure about it, believe in it in a way and then you want to publish it. Okay, what did I write here next? Um, yeah, uh, work in phases. Uh, uh, I'm already kind of setting up in compartments and in phases, but um, definitely set yourself a deadline, that's one. And two, put your clear phases on a paper, on, on, on your um, wall, and then uh, don't wait for that to happen. Just make some approximate deadlines in between those phases and the ma like a final deadline that you don't want to go after for that project and then um, work in between if you need one day if you something fi finish something faster you have one more day for next phase if you don't ne need that day uh, that was like a planned uh, 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 like a, how do you say <laughs> Sorry, if you have one more day to put in next phase and you don't even need it for that phase, then you have two more days down there. If you need two more days for that phase in the middle, then for the end you have two days less. So um, unless you're super flexible, that's how I would um, make my mind, put my mindset uh, and in and, uh, you know, don't go really too much around it don't um, don't set up crazy deadlines like I did don't don't do that but um, deadline is something that will make you finish something if you don't have that line then yep it's really hard to it's a super low uh, percentage possibility to, 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 to it's there is no possibility for you to finish because um, artists illustrators um, creative people are not uh, aware of time at all and that's how how I grasp it. I don't know. Yeah, and I think set up a deadline, work in phases. Yeah, if you find a publisher like me, and if you're going through this or self-publish, that's also kind of a process. Hello, a process. Uh, it seems simple, and it's way simpler than before. It was never simpler than today to publish a book, but there certain steps that are technical that creative people don't desire to work on and to finish nicely and that's why everybody almost everybody gets um a publisher uh but publisher doesn't do everything um it's super rare so you or if you want to learn even better um stay included in the process and stay when you're least uh, rested when you tired the most and when you're done with it you feeling like you're done with it and physically hurts still there are pretty I would say a lot of technical things to do and prepare and even a banner for the webs the publishers website or whatever they need like uh, your uh, banners for social media to say yeah I have a new book and still not to look like crap because all of my social media are probably and most probably th people see as a crappy thing to upload and publish and sometimes I spare some time and do that, sometimes I'm not but uh, without it no one will see that you did it uh, ex from, from your end, from your social media and also what I see 
um, is that I highly ap appreciate people who are presenting themselves awesome, great, and yet I don't want to spend time on it, which is contradictive and I shouldn't do it. I should really spend energy and time into creating those banners for Facebook, uh, posting it, it on YouTube. Uh, I don't use, I have a Twitter account, but I don't use it. I just share links. So um, yeah, social media is uh, very important as you all know. It, I don't have to repeat that a few times in the video. But uh, as I'm talking about myself as well, at the same time giving some sort of tips and review on this experience, it is so much different to um, to do something just for yourself and to publish. It is also very different to just illustrate some of this story because, you know, I'm feeling like behind a curtain when I get a manuscript and I, maybe I shouldn't, but when somebody takes the responsibility uh, on themselves and say, I wrote this, then I just illustrated it. And when you see um, yourself like writing and illustrating is such a uh, reflective process. You have to go back and you have to think a lot about how the, how cohesive it is, if you should change something, uh, if some parts are working less good or more good. It's really, it's, uh, it's exhausting. Uh, and I think it's beautifully, it's, it's, if you want to be exhausted in any way, this is the most beautiful, this is the most beautiful way to be exhausted from <laughs> like a best project to be exhausted from <laughs> but uh, it's still exhausting so be prepared at the end to have the patience do not underestimate anyone's advice especially publishers editors just take everything you can from them learn anything you can from them and then i guess my next books will be a uh, challenges as well but they will be a little bit easier when you went through entire process once in ca this case, twice in three languages. But this is just, to, let's say, a first attempt. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best. I wish you absolute all the best. Please create in 2021 or any year that you're watching this video. So, um, please create, write some stories that are um, wonderful for kids to, to have on their bedtime, for their bedtime stories. Uh, to hug their their plush favorite plush toy before they sleep and listen for for the their parents uh, reading to them, remembering some of them, and then uh, when they learn how to read, open the, the 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 book again, and hopefully, if they really like the books that you have written and illustrated and published, they will pass it on to. Uh, their kids, even in nowadays we have ebooks, even if the physical book is not in a good condition, they will still still have that title, they will remember it. And I think uh, you can really try, you don't have to, but you can try to um, take this uh, life and turn it into opportunity and into projects that you really love, even if you think you can't. You can always try to do that. Thank you so much. If you are anyhow interested into my future processes, I will um, film working on every and each story in the future. And the first one I'm starting from next which week, which is uh, not not Beggy Bird series, which is a warm up for real traditional painting techniques uh, like gouache. And uh, this is a story I have um, under my belt for six years, under my belt, in my notebook. And uh, I really want you to take a look. Uh, I think it will be beautiful to film because it's not digital, it's traditional. And uh, it starts from like very next video. I'm already filming some, some footage, footage to have uh, like frames with me painting and talking a little bit about it. And from hopefully March, April, I'll start working on new stories in this series, which will be super comfortable because this one that I paint right now um, in gouache is really a challenge and I'll tell you about it in my next video. So thank you for watching, thank you for bought my books, thank you if you're um, anyway, uh, in any case interested in what uh, I was talking about and uh, thank you YouTube community for having me finally getting back so much that I got from 
uh, you years ago and YouTube is incredible incredible platform and community for learning so please post publish film everything you know everything you um, can teach us and we can learn and grow together thank you thank you thank you bye